a KQED HD production. In 2006, scientists came up with a name for the mysterious and troubling bee die-offs they had been witnessing throughout the United States. They called the phenomenon Colony Collapse Disorder, or CCD. The die-offs have continued unabated, threatening billions of dollars of California crops from sunflowers to almonds. Each February, beekeepers truck more than half of the country's honeybees to pollinate California's almond crop, worth $2 billion. But roughly one-third of honeybee colonies have disappeared each year since the crisis began. Beekeeper Randy Oliver had it happen to his hives. With the colony collapse, it's, it's very sudden, where you see the, the colony just kind of teetering, still full of bees, and then boom, overnight, all the bees are gone. Scientists now believe that a combination of pesticides, mites, poor diet, and long trips across the country are making honeybee colonies vulnerable to pests and pathogens. But the specifics remain a mystery. One of the frustrating things with CCD is it doesn't look like there's any one single agent or culprit that you can point the finger to. Imagine if you had the cold and you got the flu on top of a cold. Well, that might be the case with the honeybees. You have a weird fungus and a virus, and it causes a drop in the health of a colony to the point where the colony can't maintain itself. There's no gentle way to get in there. At the University of California at Davis, scientists are trying to find ways to improve bees' health, partly by changing what they eat, partly by breeding hardier bees. Eric Musson has been the university extension apiculturist throughout the colony collapse crisis. Musson is frustrated that the disease is still rampant. What I was hoping originally was that this was going to be sort of a viral epidemic. It was going to come in just like flu comes through a human population. The susceptibles are gone, you know, but then in a couple of years it just sort of disappears and you have to wait hopefully a long time before the viruses mutate and come back and create a problem. But this one's not going away. This one's entrenched, and, and that's not good. In their search for answers, scientists have developed some innovative tactics. At the University of California, San Francisco, researchers are using tools developed for studying human pathogens to hunt for culprits in colony collapse disorder. In comparison to what we know about human biology and the infectious diseases that affect all of us, we know almost nothing about honeybees, for which we depend on so much. We did one, two, three. So scientists are essentially starting from scratch. Using a modified vacuum cleaner, they collect healthy bees from nearby hives to try to figure out what pathogens normal bees contain, so they can recognize abnormal when it occurs. Honeybee colonies, kind of like human populations, are exposed to a number of viruses and pathogens throughout the, the entire course of the year. So what this study provides us is a normal, healthy colony baseline of the ebb and flow of the microbes associated with that colony throughout the course of the year. In the lab, researcher Charles Runkel smashes up the dead bees to extract DNA or RNA and analyze what viruses or bacteria are present. As part of the study, the scientists also followed and got samples from a huge commercial beekeeping operation as it traveled across the country pollinating crops. Maybe they're picking up viruses at one part of the country and leaving them off at another or something like that. We don't know. And so what we sought to do is follow those bees as they circle around the country and ask, what is in those bees and when? Their work is already paying off. We found four new viruses, and one of them was so frequent, there was more of that virus present than every other virus that we'd known about put together. Now that the scientists have identified these new viruses, the next stage of their detective work begins. What it does is allows us to track now all these pathogens and viruses, which we didn't even know was there, and ask the important question, is this statistically associated with collapse? The critical question is, when you infect a colony with these in a controlled laboratory environment, do the bees get sick? 
And if they have something else, like another virus, another parasite, and you add this virus, is it worse? Does the colony collapse or not? Meanwhile, beekeepers are fighting to keep their bees alive. In Grass Valley, northeast of Sacramento, Randy Oliver rents out a thousand hives to make his living. He's experienced die-offs before, but this one has been more persistent. When his colonies started disappearing, he began to experiment. Oliver now splits his hives every year, taking half the bees out to start a new hive. He calls it forever young, and it seems to keep the bees healthy. That simple act of splitting gives the bees a, a fresh start. And in nature, that's what they do. Bees, bees reproduce frequently. They, they swarm every spring, and they give themselves fresh starts. And that's what beekeepers are tending to do, too. In the field, Oliver is running controlled tests of a natural antiviral product, one of several remedies promoted by private industry. At his home, Oliver examines bee tissue to see what conditions and what foods might help prevent CCD. It's a continual battle. The focus is to keep the immunocompetence of the beehive up, keep them healthy and strong. And if they're healthy and strong, they can fight off parasites, they can fight off pesticide issues. As challenging as the situation is for the beekeepers hit with losses, agriculture has managed to stay afloat. Up to this point in time, we have not had a situation where we were actually short on honeybees for almond pollination. Uh, could it happen? Maybe. But the interesting thing is that somehow or another, even with these substantial losses, many of the beekeepers remain in business and, and can refill their boxes with bees. Beekeepers are charging more for their bees pollination services, but consumers haven't yet felt the pinch. One thing consumers have felt is the need to help bees in some way. Female bumblebee. We have found small-scale beekeeping is just exploding. Where I used to go to a club and talk to maybe 12 people, now I go to that same club and there's 120 of them there, and most of them just started bees. Despite the enthusiasm of amateur beekeepers, their bees will continue to be vulnerable to colony collapse disorder until scientists figure out how to keep these pollinators healthy.